Hey, everybody, Ann here, sitting having my coffee out in front of the chickens with all of you. And I just got done reading through all your comments. Man, there are some really positive people down in my comment section. I just absolutely love it, and I so appreciate you coming and giving me encouragement and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I've been having a few good days, and I'm sorry I'm in the shade, but oh well. Um, just got up, haven't even brushed the hair. Yep, I'm still in the same shirt, but it was the first thing I could find, so I just threw it on. Yeah, I'm going to be changing shirts today because, you know, honestly, it's starting to smell a little rank. Anyhow, so today I've got to go finish working on that Easter Egger yard. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it. I did do some things yesterday, but two of the Easter Eggers got out, and I think I found how they got out. So I got to go um, do as much as I can do and see exactly how much more I need. There's so many more things that I've got to get done. But the good thing is, is I'm really enjoying being able to do much of this myself. Um, and one thing that I've learned, I should have my live and learn hat on <laughs> this morning. Um, especially if you're a female doing this on your own. You've got to be very, very careful who you associate with, who you receive help from, who you, um, you know, receive anything from, you know. Not, I'm not talking about my YouTube community because you guys just give and give and give and expect absolutely nothing in return except for me to pe keep putting out my wonderful, glorious videos. Anyhow, um, but you do got to be careful who you accept things from, either things or help, because there are people out there in this world who are incapable of giving from the goodness of their hearts. You know, I'm up front. I'm like, thank you so much. There's nothing, you know, I don't have any money to give you. I don't have a lot of things that would be helpful for you. I don't have a lot of skills. You know, um, there's certain things I can offer, you know, in return. Um, but sometimes there's some people who who give only to receive something back from you at a later date. And you're not going to know what it is. You're not going to know when it's coming. But if you don't give them what they want, it's either your time, your energy, your transportation, your, you know, just, you know, abatement from loneliness. Um, if you can't give them any of that in return to their, um, you know, to their satisfaction, then they very well may end up lashing out. They may end up speaking ill of you out in the public. They may end up um, becoming aggressive and threatening towards you. Um, so you've got to be very, very careful because sometimes there are people in this world who will demand things of you um, if, they, if they feel that what they've given you is greater than what you've given them. And sometimes they get angry. Um, and you just don't want to put yourself in any danger or, or at risk. Um, you want to feel safe on your homestead. You, you don't want to have to be in fear that someone who has helped you is going to now come back and do damage to you or your property or steal from you or any of those kinds of things. Um, so just be careful, you guys. Uh, it's best to be as self-sufficient as possible. Uh, many of you have said, well, oh gosh, well, I'll come and help you. You know, Miss Don and her daughters came. She and her daughters are just absolutely wonderful. But I really have to guard myself about who I bring into my life because um, although I am capable of defending myself, I should never have to feel the need to defend myself, um, but but <laughs> I can if I need to. Um, anyhow, so a lot has been going on around here. I've been getting a lot done. I've been feeling really, really great. And um, I think one of the reasons is because I made a conscious decision to change something about um, me and my health. Um, I've talked about it before. You all know I suffer from clinical depression. I've been diagnosed. I've been treated for it. Um, I don't like taking medicine. I don't like it. I've had to in the past. Um, and I have been experiencing a long stretch of depression. And I think you can see it in my face. And I think you also notice when it lifts. 
But one of the things that has changed in my life, um, even quite recently, is alcohol consumption. Um, you know, I usually keep to myself, but when I start hanging out here and there, you know, and it's not as though I'm without agency. I have the ability to choose and say no and not have any alcohol at all. Um, I do enjoy a glass of wine. I enjoy drinking a couple beers with Mr. Lucas across the street. Um, you know, a cocktail or a mixed drink every once in a while. But I've noticed something. If I have even one beer or two beers or a glass of wine or whatever, um, in particular, if it's like a cocktail with like hard alcohol, I feel terrible the next day. And it doesn't matter what amount it is. If it's a little bit or a lot, I can't handle it um, because the chemicals in my brain that control thought and mood are messed up. They are. Uh, it's nobody's fault. It's just the way that I'm wired. So you put alcohol on top of that and alcohol is a depressant and so if you're already a chemically depressed person, especially if you're taking medication for it, alcohol is just going to heighten your depression. It's going to make it worse. So I've sworn off alcohol altogether and I've noticed over the past week, the past week, yeah, I feel really good. And also alcohol can affect your, you know, other things in your system, you know, your joint pain. Um, I've also noticed that since I've cut everything out, I've uh, my joint pain is getting better. Now that could be coincidence because it hasn't been raining a lot lately, you know, over the last week. But, um, so that's something that I've had to make a conscious decision about myself is I cannot consume alcohol at all. And not one beer. Um, I, in fact, uh, a few days ago, no, uh, it's more than a few days ago, I went across the street, I sat down and had a couple beers with uh, Mr. Lucas. And the next day, I felt awful. Good morning, Romeo. I felt awful. So I can't do it anymore. You know, I love it. I love the idea of sitting by a fire with a, you know, a glass of wine or something like that. It's just, just the whole idea, the relaxing sort of thing that alcohol can bring you. It doesn't work for me. So I felt so much better. I've had so much more energy. My mood has been lifted. So, and also, I have seen how alcohol can destroy people who have been in my life. Um, so, I mean, I can't hang out around people who are, uh, you know, alcoholics or who are just addicted and um, drink so much that they, you know, can't even... Um, function properly. So um, I've also made the decision to keep those kind of people who drink in excess regularly out of my life. Um, no more. Oh, here they go. Caterwauling again. <laughs> I think somebody's laying an egg. Hopefully somebody is. Oh my gosh. Okay, so anyhow, off my, off my soapbox, I need to go get working on that Easter egg or pen because right now it's awful. Hey you guys, check this out. Oh, and sorry about the hair, I just washed it, but I have wanted these for so long and I've been looking at a local thrift store for them and none of them fit. They were either too long or too wide or whatever, but guess what? I got me a pair of overalls. Look, look, they got all these little different pockets all over the place. I'm still trying to get used to this whole thing down here, but look. What do you think? I think I look fantastic, don't you? <laughs> the only thing is, is I gotta get used to these little things over here. They keep coming undone. But it fits, they fit me absolutely perfectly. They're a little bit long, but that's okay. I can just tuck them into my boots. I love my new overalls. So what do I got going on with the Easter egg or pen? Well, I've changed the configuration a little bit. I didn't want to put this attached to this because really I just want to be able to open that door, let them out and do their thing. Um, I don't like opening the side door because so much of their bedding gets out here. So um, when I did that though, I didn't have enough chicken wire to connect in any way. So yeah, there's that space over there. 
Um, got that post in. Got that post in. That one and the other ones that you saw. Um, and there was like a piece of wood connecting these two pieces. I just unrolled it and it gave me about another foot of chicken wire. So it enabled me to be able to do this. Now most of this is covered with this stuff here. Um, I think that's going to change today after I get some stuff up. Um, but, so I'm going to make a door. Y'all remember this? You, ye who have been here since like the beginning. Remember that? I was going to build a thing. <laughs> well, this is as far as I got. It's not very stable. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to put some some little brackets there just to make sure that that stays really well. But this is not going to be, you know, a heavy duty door. So what do you think I'm going to do with that? Well, you'll have to wait to the next video because this video is already long enough because I've been jabbering my mouth. So you'll just have to wait and see what I come up with in the next video. See y'all. Er, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. <laughs>